Attention, the following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Outcasted OC. We have got another episode of NXT for you this week. Uh, but before we get into it, obviously just want to ask to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Hit that thumbs up if you like the review that I'm about to give you of NXT. Because this week was... I don't know, it felt like a really in-between episode, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, we're getting close to Stand and Deliver. We get some strong bits that are leading to Stand and Deliver. And then there's just some then there's just some matches that are just that are just happen and are dead quick. And that's about it, really. Um let's just open with the tag team match, okay? Because for me, this was quite disappointing because I think the wrong team won it, in my opinion. And we get OTM out of the mud versus the LWO. Okay. So this is obviously part of the tournament. For the tag team championships it's an elimination tournament okay so tell me why you have the lwo winning they're not they're not an nxt tag team they're on smackdown so why are they beating otm a tag team that really kind of needs that victory who needs the momentum um to you know lead them into 2024 in my opinion this was the wrong decision i get that baron corbin and you know braun breaker uh heels but i wouldn't have minded lucian price and bronco new to advance into the next round i really like the tag team i think they've got a lot of potential um this match was really good obviously you've got the hard hitting um style of otm mixed with just just uh, lwo's insanity like what came wild like just like comes off the ropes in this match and it's just insane like he, he has got some like daredevil mentality when that bell rings i swear to god um yeah but like i say like i, f I just feel like the lwo did not need this victory um you've got a bit of a tag team tournament going on on the main roster obviously you know with the six man at wrestlemania i feel like lwo maybe could have been a part of that instead of going into the standard deliver um you know, heading into that tournament. Because I have a feeling there might be... They, they either might win, because it's a triple threat elimination, I believe. Uh, I have a feeling they either might win the tournament or at least get into the final at Stand and Deliver, which I just think is a bit un unnecessary. Um, Next, guys, we go to backstage earlier on today. We see Obafemi arriving at the NXT arena and obviously gets interviewed. And, it's, you know, how do you feel about the North American Championship that you're about to defend? Obviously, as confident as ever, Obafemi says, basically... You know, Brooks Jensen has no chance. Brooks Jensen confronts him and says, you know, say it to my face. He tries to fight Ober. Obviously, there's people there to break it up, including Josh Briggs. Oberfemi just does not look intimidated whatsoever. He does not look phased. And he says, you know, wait wait till later on tonight. You're going to get absolutely destroyed. And Briggs, you better watch as well, because the same thing will happen to you if you try it. And um, later on before the match, um, he is basically saying the exact same thing to um, Kelly while he's getting interviewed. Uh, Dijak shows up. And says, you know, when you're done with Brooks Jensen, maybe you should start looking for a real opponent. Obviously, he's referring to himself. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing this match, to be honest with you. Um, if this is at stand and deliver, then please give me that. Oba Femi versus Dijak for the North American Championship. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I would not mind seeing that in the slightest. Um, we now stay backstage um, to where Thea Hale is talking about how she's kind of worried about tonight. Because, obviously, she thought JC Jane and Jasmine were her two friends. But it looks like they're not tagging with her tonight. It doesn't look like she's going to have any backup versus Kiana James and Izzy Dame. So, we're going to have to wait and see to, you know, see how that turns out later on tonight for Thea Hale. Um, we now go back into the ring because Roxanne Perez, yay, is in the ring explaining her actions and why she attacked Lyra Valkyria last week. Um, this is basically the official heel turn for Roxanne Perez as she turns around to the fans and says she doesn't care about what they think anymore. You know, the young, innocent, naive Roxanne Perez that you once knew is dead. She is not there anymore and she's going to start looking out for herself. She tells Ava Rain to come out and award the championship to her because Lyra Valkyria can no longer defend it because she injured her so badly. She did the same to her last year because she collapsed when she was facing Mako Satamora. Of course she collapsed because she was carrying that division on her back for the four months that she had the championship. Ava Rain says, I can't give you the championship yet because we don't know the state of Lyra Valkyrie. We don't know if she's able to defend that championship just yet. While this is all going on, Tate Paxley tries to get in the ring and tries to get to Roxanne Perez, but security hold her back and Ava Rain uh, makes the match for next week. Lyra Valkyrie is not going to be there, assumingly, but Tatum Paxley is, and it's going to be her versus Roxanne Perez next week on NXT. Obviously, Tatum try to get revenge for Lyra Valkyrie after what Roxanne Perez did to her best friend or her stalker or a tag team partner. It seems to change every single week. <laughs> um, but I just want to push up on um this um point at the moment with Roxanne Perez. 
I cannot take it seriously. I know, I know, it feels like uh, I'm hating on her every single week, but I don't, I don't care about this heel turn. Um, it's never really bothered me about like. I don't know how to say this. I can't take it seriously. Like she, she doesn't. She's too nice to be a heel. Like, and she barely makes it over the top rope. I just can't. I just can't take someone seriously. He was about like, like he was about four foot eleven, and he's like, I'm gonna beat everyone up. Well, like, it works better as like you know a plucky baby face. Um, I don't know what I would rather have to be honest with you. I feel like Roxanne Perez just needs to take a break from NXT for a little while. Maybe even go up to the main roster. Maybe she can find a, a groove up there. But for me, uh, Roxanne Perez just is not doing it for me whatsoever. But let me know what you think of Roxanne Perez in the comments. Are you a fan of this heel turn? Are you are you going to give it a chance? I'll give it a chance. I'll see where it's going. Assumingly, um, it's going to be right like Lyra Valkyrie versus Roxanne Perez at Stand and Deliver. That'll probably be a decent match. Obviously, Lyra can put on a great match. Um, Roxanne Perez for me isn't as good as everyone says she is, but I'll give her a chance and I'll give her a flowers. She's had, had a couple a couple of good matches. Uh, the triple threat um, at Vengeance Day with her and uh, with Lyra Lola Vice was pretty good, and she was a part of that. So I'll give her a flowers with that. Uh, but oh, great! Speaking of people who I really love, next we get Lexis King versus Robert Stone. Come on, Robert Stone! It's not to be, unfortunately. Lexis King does um, have like the lion's share of the offense in this match. He does end up um, hitting the coronation. Um, but Robbie E or, you know, Robert Stone, however you want to remember him, he doesn't do too, uh, too bad in this match. You know, it's only his first match. Oh, sorry, first or second match in NXT. Um, and it's been a while since he's been there, so he can't have been having that much ring practice. Um, after the match... Lexi Singh tries to carry on the attack uh, commentary are talking about how like, uh, well, Booker T in particular is talking about how the kid should have never been involved. And it's, it's, it's Robert Stone's fault that uh, the Bash brothers, uh, uh, you know, are involved in this storyline. And Vic Joseph is like, what are you talking about, Booker? They were trying to help Von Magna train for the Heritage Cup match. But anyway, um, after the match, King goes for another coronation, but Von Wagner comes out and saves him. He ends up carrying Robert Stone to the back. Um, moving on very swiftly, like NXT is moving very fast. Um, we now get the North American Championship. We was um, promised the North American Championship match. We was promised um, over Femi versus Brooks Jensen. And um, I don't know how else to say this. Uh, Brooks Jensen just gets absolutely cleavered. Like, he, he gets destroyed in this match. Like, he gets in a little bit of offense, a little bit, I suppose. Like, when Josh Briggs comes out um, to, like, kind of cheer him on and tell him to get up. But, oh, my God, Obafemi just takes this grown man who is not a small man. Brooks Jensen is not a small guy and just makes him just look tiny. He absolutely throws him around that ring. Like, Obafemi is just an absolute monster and i was saying on a live last night that it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest that if Oberfemi got fast tracked to the world championship scene if he got fast tracked to the main roster even it would not surprise me in the slightest um at the end of the match Oberfemi is just basically sending a message i'm assuming to uh josh briggs and dijak he picks up uh brooks jensen he he just flattens him like twice he just throws him down to the mat and then he hits two power bombs to the one two three convincing victory here for Oberfemi retaining the north american championship um obviously i i, I don't think any of us thought that brooks jensen was going to be Oberfemi, but you know <laughs> expected a little bit more of a fight out of him to be fair um but yeah, yeah, like Oberfemi is just on the ride of his life at the moment. He's had less than 20 matches in WWE or in his whole career, and he just looks fantastic. Like, they're playing to his strengths. He's a big guy who is a little bit green in the ring, but he, he, they literally play to his strengths. Like, he's just a big guy who can throw people around that ring. Like, what else do you want from him? Do you know what I mean? Um, next, we come to maybe the greatest segment in NXT history, okay? The greatest segment in the history of WWE, possibly. Um, so Tony D is in the restaurant, and um, him and Rizzo are talking with Stax, and they're, like, you know, welcoming Luca Crucifino to the family, an official legal eagle um, with a law degree. Um, he's the consigliere. Obviously, we learned that last week for the um, for the family. Forget about it. Um, so they're all talking about what's going on to stand and deliver, you know. Um, Luca Crucifino is handling the business for the family. In fact, he handled two things, if you know what I mean, Dan. I handled that other thing as well. Hey, hey, oh, hey. Um, <laughs> uh, Tony D is, um, is happy that he's fulfilled his word that he's going to stand and deliver to face uh, Ilya Dragunov for the NXT Championship. He congratulates Stax on timing that music absolutely perfectly and he explains that he did get in contact with Trick Williams and he was all down for what happened and um, he, he was um, all for 
Tony D's plan. Uh, Rizzo is happy that the plan is all coming together when all of a sudden a wild Ilya Dragunov appears in the restaurant and he talks about how he may be the Don, but NXT, this is all he has. Like you own all the restaurants, you all own uh, all these different types of business ventures, but he points to his NXT championship and he says, this is all I have. And it's going to take a lot for you to come and take this from me. Um, And then Ilya Dragunov gets kidnapped. <laughs> So Tony D basically says, obviously, you step to my restaurant without permission. This is what happens. A load of guys grab Ely Dragunov, throw him into the trunk of a car, and then they, dr they drive off with Ely Dragunov. Uh, Tony D says, let's go for a ride. Uh, later on in the night, uh, Ilya Dragunov is letting, uh, let out of the trunk and look where they are. The famous Tony D bridge in NXT universe, okay? They walk onto the bridge and Ely Dragunov obviously isn't very happy with Tony D. But Tony D says, listen, this isn't what you think it is. Usually I walk on this bridge with people and I'm the only one who walks back. But this isn't the case this time. He just wants to send him a message that anything can happen. He's in control. He is the Don of NXT. Um, Ely Dragunov says he is not intimidated by Tony D and he will not back down. Like he said, this is all he has and he is willing to defend it. He's going to take a lot to take the title from Ilya Dragunov. Uh, th th this th this is NXT at its peak. Like, I, I, I love this, just this daft, dumb shit from NXT. It's so good. Like, I, I, Ilya, the NXT champion just got kidnapped by a mafia boss. I don't know how else to say that. Um, I will say this about Ilya Dragunov. Like, like the way he talks sometimes really comes off as like... um. Do you know, do you know, just out of place, like everyone else is talking normally. I mean, I know like Tony Diaz, like he's in the mob, he's in the, he's in the mafia, like, you know, forget about it. Like, you know, he's putting on a bit of an accent. And then he lives right off like, walks in and says, Tony, I am the mad dragon. And yeah, it's, it's like, he's, he's like in a theater. It's, <laughs> he's like projecting to the back of the room, Ilya Jagunov. Um, but yeah, this is the greatest segment in NXT history. Um, I will defy anyone to tell me any different than that. Um, so yeah, I will be making many videos about this on TikTok. So make sure you check that out. Rudy Pooh Candy Ass. I might even upload them to the Outcasted OC channel as well. But heading back to the arena, we're getting a Gigi Dolan versus Ariana Grace. And if Ariana Grace wins this match, she gets to be in control of Gigi Dolan and teach her proper etiquette. Um, as in, she te uh, teaches her how to walk and talk and, you know, not swear and like be more polite and like how to be a proper lady, basically, Ariana Grace is saying. Um... This, this nothing really happens in this match except at the end where Ariana Grace goes to hit Gigi Dolan with like you know the sort of the tiara that she wears. Um, but Gigi Dolan like blocks that by hitting a low blow on Ariana Grace right in the nuggets. Um, if she had any, uh, which obviously causes a disqualification. Like Vic Joseph said, you know, a low blow is a low blow, which means Ariana Grace wins the match. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, how this plays out. I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Ariana Grace being in control of Gigi Dolan. Um, Ariana Grace is just such a talent. Like, obviously, the daughter of um, Santina Morella, she defo has the charisma of Santina Morella, but she also has in-ring skills there as well. Um, but my favorite thing apart, Ariana Grace, is just a backstage segment. So it's going to be great. So that's why this whole thing with Gigi Dolan is just going to be a, just a true, a true classic to watch. Classic NXT segments. You, you got to love it, right? Um, after the match, um, Gigi Dolan obviously does not look very happy, um, but it is what it is, I suppose. Sorry, Gigi, you shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't have hit Ariana Grace in the giblets. Um, next, we get a tag team match. We get Thea Hale. Well, it, at first, it's a handicap match because we don't know who's going to be a, um, a tag team partner. We get Thea Hale versus uh, Kiana James and um, Izzy Dame. But Fallon Henley runs out and ends up being... Um, Thea Hale's tag team partner. After saying they were busy, Jasmine and JC Jane show up at ringside and end up um, kind of cheering on Thea Hale, but more kind of just watching what she's doing. Unfortunately, the distraction outside, JC Jane looks like she was trying to help Thea Hale, but kind of costs her the match. She gets get back into uh, thrown back into the ring by Kiana James, gets hit with a bankruptcy for the one, two, three. Izzy and Kiana win this match. In my mind, probably the best decision because they try to push Kiana and Izzy Dame as a good tag team. So... Um, Booker T saying uh, Fallon Henley picked the wrong side because obviously this time last year her and Kiana James were NXT Women's Tag Team Champions um, after the match Thea Hale gets on the microphone while JC and Jasmine are, are in the ring and basically says you know you were supposed to be my best friend you were my sister I thought I'd found someone who truly believed in me the way I believed in myself but no you're just a toxic 
bitch. And you know what? I don't want to be anything like you. So you know what? The hold the ale is back and I'm going to be myself, baby. Like, so it looks like she's going back to her old chase you roots where she's going to be absolutely hyper for everything, which I'm down for. I love hyper Thea Hale. Thea Hale is great. She's one of the biggest talents on the NXT roster. She's very over. Um, and I think if you just let her do what she needs to do in chase you, wow, that rhymed crazy. Um, it's going to work out just fine. Unless JC Jane and Kiana James team up and get their get their hooks into chase you and somehow drag it away from Andre Chase, which just would just be an absolute tragedy. So I hope that doesn't happen. Um, let me know in, in the comments what you think so far of NXT, guys. It's uh, rolling on really quickly this week, I know. Um, but let me know what you think of NXT in the comments. Are you enjoying this week's NXT? Or is it, like I said at the start, is it just a bit like here or there? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not minding it as I'm watching it, but like I'm, I am realizing it's moving very fast. Um, speaking of Chase University, about, uh, by the way, uh, we got Riley Osborne looking at the Heritage Cup and then the NQCC walking and said, you will never get close to that Heritage Cup. Cup. It looks like Riley Osborne or Nathan Fraser or Axiom are going to be challenging for the Heritage Cup in a couple of weeks, maybe even at Stand and Deliver. They said as soon as they decide who's going to do it, uh, the NQ NQCC, Jesus Christ, that's hard to say, will invoke the NQCC rules um, and, you know, they will face whoever is chosen. D Jesus Christ, th th this this felt very disconjointed, this backstage bit, because obviously they try to um, hype for the Heritage Cup match, whoever is going to be challenging for that. But also the try to hype for the tag team tournament that they're going to be in next week. So the try to hype two matches at the same time. I'm assuming it's going to be Riley Osborne versus either Charlie Dempsey and and, and Damon Kemp. Um, or, you know, like you get the tag team match of Nathan Fraser and Axiom versus maybe Drew Gulak and Miles Bourne. I don't, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know how it's going to end up, but I'm, I'm excited for both of those matches, to be fair. I think the NQCC, all of them are really talented. Um, Axiom is absolutely phenomenal in the ring. Riley Osborne shows me a lot of upside. Um, Nathan Fraser is phenomenal in the ring, but he just needs to stop talking just because, my God, whoever's decision it is to give him a microphone on a weekly basis, just, oh, I mean, I don't advocate for losing jobs, but God, I don't know whose idea it was. Uh, we stay backstage to where uh, basically Hank and Tank and the OC are cutting a promo in each other, basically both saying that they're going to win the elimination tag team tournament, basically. Um, they've done a lot of brothering, have the OC, um, and, you know, they've, they've had a lot more experience than Hank and Tank, uh, so they're going to win. Hank and Tank say, you know, we didn't get here by accident. We didn't get here, uh, you know, uh, with favors or anything. We worked our way from the amateurs to the top, you know, like great, because obviously one of them used to be a security guard. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna go on to defeat the wolf dogs. The wolf dogs show up and like you know uh, say you know you're gonna beat the OC. You know show me the passion. Show show me the passion. Like they, they try to hype um Hank and Tank up. Um it turns into a weird segment. Here. <laughs> I, lo I love wolf dogs. I just think Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin are amazing at the moment. But I, I love the fact that they were hyping up Hank and Tank, the underdogs in this match. Uh, it, I, I do think the OC are gonna want uh, go on to win. I'm probably gonna be in the final to be honest with you. Um. I also have a feeling that the OC are probably going to be defeating the Wolf Dogs for the tag team titles. Seeing as though, I think it's about time that Baron Corbin made his way back onto the main event or the main roster with this new gimmick or this new old gimmick that he's got because I think he would make money with it. And obviously, Bron Breaker is killing it on SmackDown at the minute. So I think it's time for them to drop the tag team championships. They've had a nice little run, but, you know, all good things must come to an end. Um, Hopefully, something that will come to an end very quickly. Um. After this is the Rich Holland versus Sean Spears match. Um, so, so earlier on in the night, Rich Holland is training for the match and he gets a FaceTime call from his wife and his child. He wishes him good night and he loves him. And um, that's trying to portray that obviously Rich Holland is a family man. He's not the guy that everyone thinks he is. You know, he's he wants to be a better person for his family and wants to change um, the perception of himself in the NXT locker room but Sean Spears obviously is trying to get the anger out of him and we see that in this match all the way through the match Sean Spears is trying to get this anger out of Rich Holland and he succeeds in the end he slaps him he's like hitting him and he's he's saying that he let his wife and his daughter down he has him in the ropes and he's just punching him in the face and eventually Rich Holland uh, snaps and puts Spears through a table um, he gets a chair out as Sean Spears walks, uh, well, crawls back into the ring. And as he's about to hit Sean Spears with a chair, the referee takes it off him and puts it into the corner away from Ridge Holland. But as this is going on, Ridge Holland gets rolled up. One, two, he kicks out, but Spears keeps on top of him. He gets him up for the C4. He hits the C4, which just so happens to land. Vic Joseph says inadvertently 
um, onto the chair in the corner of the ring. I'm not sure how that was inadvertently. He literally walked straight up to the chair with the C4 and like planted Ridge Holland right on top of it. Um, Ridge Holland gets pinned one, two, three. Um, what do you guys think of this Ridge Holland gimmick at the moment? I mean, I'm I'm kind of here for it, but at the same time, I'm I'm more like get on with it basically because I I really don't know how I, how I feel about it. I'm I'm gonna let it simmer. I'm gonna let it cook. Um, I feel like these two could have a couple more good matches, Sean Spears and Ridge Holland. Maybe they end up becoming a tag team. Maybe they, they end up turning Ridge Holland heel along with Sean Spears. I wouldn't mind seeing them as a tag team. That would be really cool. Um, I don't know what you'd call them. Like We'd call them the, the Ridge Men or the, the, the Chair the chair people. I, I don't know. Holland Spears. The Ridge and Sean. The Sean Chair. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you would call them, okay? Shut up. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing where, where, where this goes. Um, but at the same time, like I say, it needs to move on very quickly. But guys, let's get to the juicy bit. Obviously, we had the mafia bit before, favorite part of the night. But let's get to the juicy bit. We get Trick Williams return and he gets in the ring and basically says, why Carmelo? I was your brother. I was always there for you. You know, I was there for your highs when you won the championship, when you won the North American championship. I was always in your corner smiling because your brother, I'm your brother. Sorry, and um, and you know, I'm always here for you, and I'm always supporting you, no matter what. But it wasn't the same for you, and I didn't want to listen to the rumors that everyone was telling me, like you know, Carmelo was pulling a face every time you won a match. Um, you lied about Ilya Zhaganov and you lied about Lexis King, and when I confronted you, you looked me in the eyes and you said it wasn't you that attacked me. Um, John Cena even turned around and said to me, you know, Carmelo's playing you. You need to handle your own business. And when you ended up going out and you were on 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 my own, um, you said you were happy for me. Um, even so, I had to go to Shawn Michaels and get some advice, and I became Trick Williams, and the fans were down for it. Everyone was down for it, and you were meant to be my boy, but you're not. And you know what? You're right. We're not on the same level. Yours is still. I think he says you're still a little punk. Um, standing on it, standing on a stool with Timberland boots on. You're not on um, Trick Williams' level, and this is when he gets interrupted. Weirdly enough, by the metaphor, um, that being Aura Mensa, Chikara Jackson, Noam Dar, and Lash Legend. Um, Noam Dar says he's out here to steal the hype because he's not going to lie. Trick Williams is the hottest thing in NXT right now, and Trick Williams turns and goes, "Well, look at your girl, Lash Legend." So because it must be true because she's feeling me right now, and the crowd are like, "Way, what that trick?" <laughs> um. <laughs> Noam Dar gets in the ring and tries to attack along with Aura Mensa, but Trick Williams is taking them both on. He's knocking them both down. They both get out the ring. Um, he turns around and he's about to hit and he realizes it's Last Legend. So he ended up like sort of twirling around and leaning her over and giving her a little kiss. Last Legend and Trick Williams have a bit of a smooch on NXT. The crowd love this. They absolutely pop for it. Um, Last Legend seems to like it quite a lot. He lets go of Last Legend and he knocks out Noam Dar and Oromenso one more time and they roll out of the ring. Last Legend is kind of there, like the conflicted, like she's with the metaphor, but she's also, you know, feeling trick willy a little bit. Whoop that trick, baby. Uh, Vic Joseph asks why Book Booker is sweating on commentary. God, please. I'm just going to move on from that. I don't think we need an answer from Booker T to why he's sweating on commentary. Um, but that's how the show goes off the air, guys. Trick Williams is back and he challenges Carmelo Hayes to a match at Stand and Deliver. Something I've been saying for months, guys, on here, on these NXT reviews. Four months. That it is going to be the main event of NXT Stand and Deliver. Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. It has to main event. It reminds me of the Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano feud. It needs to be the main event. Um... Well, like I said, guys, let me know what you think of NXT this week in the comments. Did you enjoy it? And are you down? And are you ready for NXT stand it and deliver it in a couple of weeks? Um, guys, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up and tell me what you thought of NXT in the comments. And also, my Alexa just came on. I'm sorry, I just got distracted there. And also subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of our content. Check out Courtney's review of Monday Night Raw from last night. Um, check out the podcast tomorrow. We have got a review of all the overalls from WWE 2K24. Obviously, we brought out a video a couple of weeks ago where we were guessing the overalls. Well, it looks like a lot of our guesses didn't line up with what they actually became. So that's going to be interesting to see what that is. And also stay tuned for Saturday morning, big guys, because you're going to be getting the SmackDown review from G or Ross. But that is all we've got time for today, guys. Make sure you go follow Outcasted and all the other channels. Uh, links are going to be in the description below. Have a great Thursday. Tomorrow. 
and today's Wednesday. Oh my God. This this video is falling apart at the end. Alexis is talking to me. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking nonsense. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Have a good rest of your week and peace out. Jesus Christ.